Hello guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary folks. If you click on this video because you've been struggling to fully understand this annoying concept called OOP, you are in the right place. If you just completed the C video series on this channel and you're now wondering what's next, you're in the right place as well. Or if you open this video with no particular agenda, still stay with me, you won't regret it. Anyways, welcome aboard and let's get started. Alright, those of you who have just completed our C video series and are now wondering what's next, well, OOP is next. Why? Well, despite all the criticism and hate from all possible corners, you just can't make anything useful without using OOP. Now, when I say useful, I mean something like an app or a game. Now, is it not possible to make anything useful using, say, just C? Well, it's possible, but you'll probably rip all of your hair and not just on your head before you complete your project. See, nowadays, you don't really write programs from scratch. Normally, you use existing platforms made by other companies. And to be able to use those platforms, you need to know the programming languages that those platforms support. And I can't think of any popular platform whose primary language is not an OOP language. For example, you want to make an iOS app, you use Swift or Objective-C. Want to make an Android app, you need to know Kotlin or Java. Want to make a game using a game engine such as Unity, you need to know C-sharp. And all of these languages are OOP languages. Want to do data science? You need to know Python. Web development, JavaScript, and yes, both Python and JavaScript support OOP, and you can't make anything complex with these languages without using OOP. All right, so no matter how you or someone you know feel about OOP, you need to understand it if you want to make something useful. All right, so what is OOP? OOP stands for Object-Oriented Programming. So OOP is programming based on using objects. Then what is an object? An object is just a form of data. It's one of the five basic elements of programming that we covered in the C video series. So does it mean that objects are not different from numbers, characters, strings, arrays? That's exactly what it means, I mean, conceptually. One technical difference is that objects can contain other data. An object can contain, say, two integer numbers, one floating point number, three strings, two characters, and an integer array. So an object is basically data that acts as a container for other pieces of data. All right, so what determines the contents of an object? How does the computer know what kind of data an object must contain? Well, in addition to objects, there is another important concept in OP, class. Class is what defines the contents of an object. So classes are used to create objects, pretty much like a blueprint is used to build a house. All right, if objects are data, then what exactly are classes? A class is basically code that you write. In pure OOP languages such as Java or c -sharp, basically no code can be written outside of a class. All right, so we write classes and then use those classes to create objects. And then what? Well, an OOP program is essentially a system where classes and objects interact with one another. What do I mean by interact? Well, one example of interaction would be one object calling a method using another object. And methods are essentially the OP version of a function. And yes, by function, I mean one of the five basic elements of programming covered in the C series. Now, there's of course more to OP. For example, the notorious four principles, namely encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. But I'm going to end it here since none of those can be effectively explained without proper examples. But don't worry, we have an entire video series where we give you such examples while making a Tetris game in Java. Now, even though it's hardly possible to fully explain the concepts of OOP in a few minutes, what would be a good starting point is the understanding that objects are data, classes are code, and the classes are used to create objects. All right, if you're ready for a new journey, you might want to check out our Java video series on this channel. Or if you want to go for something even more challenging, you can check out our game making video course on Udemy. The links are in the description. And this is it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye.